All right, should we get started? All right, hi folks. Uh, my name is Kush, and I'm a product manager on the team. Uh, here with me is one of the finest uh, product directors we have here at Salesforce, uh, Nancy Swan. Hi. Uh, and both of us, uh, we are from the commerce team, and we're really excited here to be sharing with you um, how you, your customers, uh, and your users can build commerce experiences faster than ever before with the page designer. Now, um, as with every uh, Salesforce presentation, we have our customary sort of message. Please make your buying and your implementation decisions based on what you see in the product versus what you see in our roadmap. So let's get started. Um, today, Commerce Cloud offers a variety of tools and capabilities for developers and customers to build out rich B2C commerce experiences programmatically. Now, the, t the key term there is programmatically. Now, imagine you're a non-technical user, someone like a marketing, uh, a marketing manager or a storefront uh, manager, and you have to launch a uh, marketing promotional page, a campaign page. In order to do that, what these individuals do is they go back to the development teams to say, can you build these pages? And what this does is it adds lag to time to market and it adds churn. And so what we have done is introduced the page designer. So you as a developer, you would go ahead and build out your commerce site programmatically like you do today. But your non-technical users, your marketing managers, your uh, storefront managers would be able to augment that site with additional pages all of this declaratively with clicks, not code. Again, using the page designer. Now, the page designer is available today for all customers, developers to use in development, staging, production environments. It is available in open beta. And what that means is that it's available for all of you to use without intervention from Salesforce. Now, what this means is that your te non-technical users would be able to build out pages declaratively choose from a set of components that you as developers have created, drag and drop them, build out this page in a declarative fashion, be able to preview this content and publish this. Again, all of this with clicks. Now, a few sort of concepts that we have introduced. The first is the, with, with the page designer. The first is obviously the concept of the page. Within the page, we have what we call regions. Think of these regions as sections. And then finally, within each one of these regions, the ability to embed various components. Right? So you've got pages, you've got regions, you've got components. Now, if we think about the implications to developers, what this means is that there are two concepts that, as a developer, you need to think about. You have the concept of the page type. Now, think of the page type as a page template. So you may have a page type for your home page, for your category landing page, for your product detail page. Again, these are all pages that as a non-technical user, when you fire up the page designer, you would be able to choose from a set of these pages that you as a developer have already created, pre-created for your non-technical users to use. Similarly, you would have already, you as a developer would have already created a set of component types. These are, think of as components, right? So you could have a component for your banner, for a set of layouts, right? Uh, Etc. So any component for any sort of functionality. So again, from a developer impl implication perspective, it means that you as a developer would create a set of page types, you would create a set of components that your non-technical users can reuse. Now to bring these concepts to life, uh, I'm going to pass it over to Nancy to walk us through a demo. Perfect. Thank you. Take that from you. All right. So we gave you a little background um, on why we brought Page Designer. Um, and he's talked about some of the terms that we're using. I know a lot of you are familiar with content slots. What we want to do now is kind of walk you through what your workflow looks like today and what it'll look like with Page Designer. We're going to do um, a high-level UI review of the tool and Business Manager. And then we're going to go behind the scenes to show you the code and how it's all pulled together. So for the workflow walkthrough, we're going to talk about like the summer campaign. So here's your team. you got your e-com manager. She's got the concept down. She knows what she wants. She's got her business goals in mind. So she's going to write the, the requirements, the business requirements on what she wants. She's going to then meet with you as a developer to share those requirements. This is what I want to need for this summer campaign that I want to launch. And then you as a developer will go back and deconstruct those requirements to define what is going to be a page type, what will be a component, what it is that you're going to build, the reusable, com reusable assets that you're going to build. At that point, 
you're going to hand it off to the web content manager. So now she's in a position where she can log in a business manager, go to page designer, click new. That layout comes up, that page type. She selects it. She's ready to start dropping components, adding content, adding um, products, getting her calls to action ready, really building out that entire page. So if you're familiar with business manager right now, they're needing to go into an individual content slot on the homepage hero, the second banner, right? In this case, they get to go and build that page as one. She can schedule, she can preview, she can target to specific customer groups or audiences um, and set components up to run at different times or the whole page itself. That's it. Now, that probably sounds like a pretty familiar workflow, but this is where the magic happens. Fall campaign, holiday campaign, spring campaign comes up, you're out of the picture. They're not going to pick up the phone and call you and go, hey, you know, we need to build out these pages, right? You're free. The e-com manager and the web content manager can go ahead and create new pages, new experiences, new campaigns, because the page types and components that you had built are reusable over and over again, OK? So if we go into it a little bit deeper, the e-com manager, she knows what the design guidelines are, the brand constraints. She knows exactly what the products are. Like I said, she's got the whole picture, and she's going to write that and pull that together. She's going to sit down with you, and she says, you know, marketing's come up with this great layout that um, I want you to, you know, I want to build this for my summer campaign. And, you know, because of our brand guidelines, i got to be careful. I want that page layout fix, okay? She wants a home, she, oh, I want a hero banner on the top, and I want to be able to schedule it for different customer groups. Got it? That second carousel, I want to highlight my top categories. OK, so you're thinking, maybe I'm going to put some constraints around that layout to only use a certain component. She gets down to Einstein recommended products. I want to surface my Einstein recommendations. Now, this is a great example of the custom attribute editor that we also have for Page Designer. What it allows you to do is extend the functionality to bring in custom UI, custom tools. So for instance, you want to create a component that will allow your um, business user to change the color of a button, change the font, leverage third parties, such as the Einstein engine, bringing in um, Olapic, Instagram, your power reviews, right? So it really allows you to extend the functionality of Page Designer. You're like, no problem. She's like, you know, in that bottom area there, um, I really like what they did. I don't want them mucking with the look and feel. I want that to stay the same. I just want them to be able to populate the product in the product name. Good. You got it. So at this point, you go away. You deconstruct that page. You deconstruct that requirements. And out of that, you're able to define the page type that you're going to create and put some, you know, you can add you can add some logic around it to like control which components could be placed in which layout. You can define the components, um, the attributes that you're going to surface, what attributes is your web content manager going to fill out for the hero banner, for example. Is it a required or optional field? You can do all that, and guess what? It's reusable, so it's not like a one and done. That is now going to go into the page designer and their business manager. So you hand that off, and actually what you're also doing is controlling. This is the UI that your web content manager is going to see. She's going to be working in that right-hand side, and that's where you're going to put those attributes that they can populate and work with, a drop-down, a pick list, um, text formatting, uh, text justification. You inform all of that there. So at that point, you're done. You hand it off to her. She goes in. She's able to use that UI to build out each of those components on the page. And then after that, she goes in because they also want to schedule that home page hero to run at a different time, one to run in July, one to run in August. She goes ahead and schedules it, and then she previews it across every device type that you support, right? Because you have the ability to preview the whole page across device types, across different experiences, all within the tool set. And she publishes it, and you're good to go. So I'm actually going to put on the hat of a that web content manager here for a second. So this is business manager. This is page designer within business manager. It's under the content library. And if I go in, just to give you an example, I go in and I want to create that summer campaign because my developer has just told me that page type and component has been built. I can go ahead and set up my summer campaign. And then for the purposes of this, you notice here I've got five different page types that I can choose from, and I know he told me to use this one. 
as I save and create it, I'm brought to my workspace, my visual editor. And right here, if I go into my page structure, you're going to see all of the layouts that the developer and the e-commerce manager had to find, right? That home hero, the category tiles, the recommendations. So she's in a position where she can immediately start to go in, drag and drop components, and build up the page. So if you are a, uh, if you are a developer who's building for, say, service, sales, um, marketing, et cetera, you might start to see a lot of familiar familiarity, right? Where as a customer, as a developer, you're starting to see some parity across the portfolio that's provided. Absolutely. All right, so let's go back, and I'm going to go to an almost completed page as the web content manager. Where did my home page go? There it is. All right. So let's say I've been working on it, and I've almost got the page ready for my summer campaign. I've got one category tile I'm missing, look, looking good. I was waiting for marketing to get me a new asset for that men's category tile. They've uploaded it into the same content library that we've been using with our content pages and content slots. So I'm going to go ahead and add that category tile. I'm just going to mosey on over here. My components come up, and here's my category tile. I'm going to select that. And you'll notice that the UI has changed over here so that these are the attributes I'm going to populate to support that component. In this case, I know that I want to target the men's category. So my category picker comes up, select that. I'm going to go to my media picker. And again, this is in the same library that we've been using before. So I'm going to go to assets and hopefully marketing put it in the right place. And they did. There's the asset I was waiting for. So I'm going to click. Boom. All right. So if I scroll down a little bit, OK, so this is men's. And it looks like this is left justified. So I'm going to put that there in the vertical alignment there. All right. Looking good. Boom. Done. It's, and again, I'm in the page designer visual editor. I can easily scan and look at it. So I'm going to get ready to publish this. And I'm looking. There's my Einstein. Huh, OK, it's a summer campaign. So I probably want to have the shirts a little higher than the gloves. So I'm going to actually drag and drop that over there. Drag and drop functionality. So your web content manager and your e-commerce manager can play with the page to their heart's content to get it pixel perfect. Now, I'm almost ready to publish it, but I also had set up some components on this page because I'm targeting my women's shoppers. I want to see what that page is going to look like, what their experience is going to be. So what you'll see up here are my preview tools. So I can vary it by device type. And here's my preview settings. Similar to our storefront toolkit, you can do it now in Page Designer. So I know that that customer group was women shoppers. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm going to apply it. Boom. All right, so there we go. My home page hero has updated with the content that I targeted to that customer group. And there I got those categories. So I'm ready to publish. I'm happy. All of, the, um, all of the customer groups, all the content, everybody's happy. I can publish it, and I'm good to go. OK? So now, as we talk about, let's go back up to our home page hero here. And let's pull this full-size component. So when we're talking about the development or the code behind it, Basically, it's using um, three components. Okay, So we're using a JSON definition file. We're using a rendering script and a rendering template. Okay, So here is that UI. And I'm going to pull up the pull up these files so we can talk through them. All right. So this is my JSON file for the component that we were just looking at. Basically, page designer types our page designer page types and components all leverage this JSON, defi a de JSON definition file. This is where you define the attributes that you're going to surface in that UI that your business user is going to use, right? Um, it's also where you put the editorial attributes that can kind of inform what it's going to look like on the storefront. That, in turn, is going to be leveraged. So if we look here, you can see it's kind of mimicking what we saw. That, in turn, is going to be leveraged by your rendering script. So this is comprised of an export leverage function that is going to take that JSON definition, the page designer UI, and entered attributes, and it's going to it's going to um, it's going to um, sorry, it's going to let's see here, I just lost my place. I'm sorry. It's going to create a model that can be processed by the rendering template. All right. So we've got that in place there. Finally, we're going to go to the ISML template. And if any of these terms sound familiar, again, you're in good shape. 
So this basically what happens now is this ISML template then is going to take um, take that that it's going to take that, it's going to, that, it's going to process it, and that is what's going to be responsible for what is presented on the storefront as well as in the site preview for your merchant. So it's very familiar. It's very it's similar to how our customers, our developers, build commerce sites today. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Nothing new. Um, I mean, if you've worked in this, worked in these types of files before, you're going to know what to do. So if we go back and we pull it all together and look at my website again, as we talked about, that definition file is informing all of the attributes that you're going to surface, what the rules are around them. And then that, in turn, is going to be, that's going to be processed, which will then, in turn, inform the rendering template on what the customer or what your business user is going to see when they're previewing it, as well as what they're going to see on the storefront. OK. All right. All right, so if we talk about how to get started. We've got some different, got some different documentation for you. So right now, we have this released in Git. It's supported in Site Genesis as well as SFRA. As Kush mentioned, we've got two page types, a fixed and an open layout. We also have five to six different components, so home page hero or a hero banner, product tile, category tile, and then we have a couple different layouts. Y'all can take that, sit down with your e-commerce manager, and go ahead and start to define what pages do you want to start with, home page, category landing, um, maybe some content marketing landing pages to create those page types and components to get them on their way. Okay? So with that, I'm going to hand it back to Kush to talk about Roadmap. Awesome. Thank you, Nancy. So what we've done is, we've, in the short amount of time, we've actually shared quite a lot with you. But again, as Nancy articulated, all of these resources are available on GitHub, and we encourage all of you to go check it out. Now, as we think about our road ahead, um, a few things to call out. One is, again, to reiterate, Page Designer is in open beta right now, which means that it's available without any Salesforce intervention for all of you to use right now itself. And with what's in market today, you can fundamentally build two types of pages. We can build basically non-dynamic uh, pages. So think about it as your home page, your category landing page, uh, your promotion page, all of these pages the drag drop capabilities, the custom attribute editor, the uh, ability to actually put Einstein into there, you have enough to get going, right, for, for non-dynamic uh, non pages. Now, as we think about our road ahead, uh, we, will, we intend to GA this product uh, as part of the August release. Again, for those of you who are familiar with the demandware stack, right, the commerce cloud stack, we have multiple uh, deliveries over the course of the year, and so the GA release will be in August, uh, so that um, with the GA release, your teams, your customers can get ready for the holiday season. As part of the Dreamforce release uh, around November, this is where we will give customers the ability to declaratively build out dynamic pages. So example of dynamic pages include your product detail page, your search page, right, for that matter. So again, that's the sort of the direction that we're heading across the board down the road. Great. Yep. We'll move to the next slide. And I think right now we really are at the end of the Prezo, uh, but we just wanted to call out all of us are going to be at Connections, and we hope to see you there as well. Great. Thank you. Thank you guys very yeah. much.